Greetings, fellow Terrans. Professor McKee here with a tutorial for Terra Invicta. We finance professors have hobbies, and one of mine is playing Terra Invicta. I'm creating a collection of tips I've learned while playing this game in case you want to have a study break or to fend off an alien invasion. And today's guide is a quick tip on how to optimize for research, particularly early on. So there, I have a different video where I go through all of the factors that optimize a country's research they are very important for a large country so you know the things like gdp per capita education cohesion population but did you know that one of the factors that generates research for a country has a minimum amount there is a minimum floor for the amount of research a country produces and if a country would be below the minimum, because they have low population or low GDP, the research will get pulled up. And since these countries are really small and have low GDP, of like 24 billion or less, these countries are really cheap on control point cost, but they still produce research. In fact, if you sort of look at the research efficiency of each control point that you're using, these countries are amazing. So let me demonstrate by doing some math. <laughs> uh, so United States, this is probably the best country in terms of its starting condition for research. You know, it's not perfect. You need better cohesion. You need better democracy. You need to get rid of the unrest. But that'll happen naturally. It's producing. 105 research per month and it costs 33 control point cap. So we're paying 105 divided by 33, three. We're getting three research a month for each point of control path we're using to hold the United States. China's in a worse position than US and it's less efficient in terms of holding uh, for research. So you get 94 a month and it costs you 37.61. So that gets you about 2.5 monthly research per control point, per one, one unit of control point cap. Now, over time, we can improve this. Oh, and just one more example, because European Union is a common start. France starts out at 31.5 per month. It costs 15.99. That that's at 1.97 for monthly research per point of control, pen, of control cap. Uh, pretty much all these wealthy countries, Germany, US, probably Italy, Spain, they're going to be somewhere between two to three. I mean, I think, I believe the US is one of the best of the large population countries for research. Now, let's look at some of the small countries. I'm going to start with the smallest. Micronesian states. These guys cost 0.53 for their cap, and it creates 22 science. So you're getting 43 monthly research for a single control point amount. That is incredibly efficient compared to the US. Now, I have a little bit of a caveat here. Right now, there's no unrest. But because of how poor this is, and it has high democracy, it's going to gain a bunch of unrest, naturally. It'll probably go up to a base unrest of five, unless you boost the economy. So the efficiency will decrease. Like your, your efficiency is going to get worse, substantially worse, but it's so much more efficient that even if it gets worse, it's still gonna be worth it. As long as you have a spare counselor action to take this this little little guy. Uh, just a couple more examples. <clears throat> so if we go to a little bit larger country, one that already has a lot of unrest, so it's already being penalized in research. So you, you can see it's at nine instead of like twenty. Central African Republic. It costs us one point two nine for nine research. So we're getting. Um, roughly it's a little bit less than nine but it, it, it's um, seven 
research a month per control point cap, I believe, if, I'm, if I did the math correctly. And that's like twice as efficient as the United States, and even more than that for other countries like France or China. It's already really high on unrest. I believe it's it's not actually at its resting on value because it goes up to 8.4. <coughs> but it's really efficient. And I mean, you can boost GDP pretty easily. It's so small. And, and so this is really great. I think the best country for this is Iceland because Iceland's really rich. It's also tiny, 300,000 people. So it only costs you three research, three control point to get, but you get 20 research. 20 divided by three is a lot larger than three. <laughs> You're gonna get about six research a month per control point gap-ish, or something about that. And you have no unrest, because it's it's got awesome GDP per capita, it's gonna have excellent, it's gonna have really high uh, cohesion. So Iceland's probably the ideal one that'll work great for you but a lot of these little small ones at the bottom and when you sort by control point cap if it's probably if it's less than three you're pr you're very likely to have a very efficient use of your control point co capacity now these countries are of course not a replacement for wealthy developed countries or just wealthy countries like china you need these countries for more things than just research. You need them for mission control, you need them for boost, funding, uh, armies. So you still want to go for these, but if you have an extra control point, a single extra control point, and go take these, go take a small country. That's a real sneaky way of getting an extra 20 research per month or 10 research per month for, for a very efficient cost. So the next time you're trying to build up that those research points on Earth, we now know a sneaky way to get just a little bit extra efficiency out of those excess control point capacity. If you found this video helpful for your study break, please comment, like, and or subscribe so that others can find this video too. Happy not studying or researching a way to deal with that alien invasion.